Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. In this video, we demonstrate how to enhance the Spring Boot sample application to create a RESTful web service. This video builds upon the sample application that was created in an earlier video in this series. Let's get started. I've opened the sample Spring Boot application in the Spring Tool Suite, or STS. Since we already added the Spring Boot starter web dependency to the POM, we don't need to change the POM to create RESTful web services. First, let's create a model object which our web service controller will manage. To begin, let's create a package named org.example.ws.model. Next, let's create a new model class named greeting. The greeting class will have two attributes, an ID and a text attribute. Let's make the ID attribute numeric and the text attribute a string. Create the constructor and the getters and setter methods for the attributes. Next, let's create the RESTful web service endpoint. First, let's create a package for web service controller classes. Let's name the package org.example.ws.web.api. Next, let's create a new class named greeting controller. Annotate the class with at rest controller. The rest controller annotation extends the standard spring stereotype annotation at controller. The REST controller annotation informs Spring that it should convert the objects returned from controller methods into JSON or XML responses. Now, let's create a controller method that will serve as the first web service endpoint. Create a method named GetGreeting. The method returns a class named ResponseEntity. This class is a wrapper which Spring will convert into an HTTP response from the controller method. The type of the response entity is the type of Java object which will be converted into the HTTP response body. In this case, it's a collection of greeting objects. Annotate the getGreeting method with at request mapping. The request mapping annotation informs Spring that this method should receive HTTP requests. The elements within the request mapping annotation inform Spring which HTTP requests to map to this method. The value element contains the context path to which this method is mapped. The method element contains, indicates that this method should only be invoked for inbound GET requests. The PRODUCES element tells Spring to convert the list of greeting objects into a JSON response. In the controller class, let's create some temporary helper methods to manage a simple hard-coded collection of greeting objects. In a later video in this series, we will replace this with business services that serve up data from a Spring Data repository. First, create a map to hold the collection of greeting objects and their pseudo-primary key identifiers. Next, create a helper method named save. The save method stores greeting objects into the map.
Finally, create a static code block that initializes the map of greetings with two objects. Again, these attributes and methods are only temporary. We will replace this in a later video in this series when we convert the greeting object into a Spring Data Persistent Entity. Now let's complete the getGreetings web service method. The method returns a new response entity object containing the collection of greetings and the HTTP status enum value of OK. The HTTP response will contain a status code of 200. Let's run the application and see our hard work in action. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type mvn spring boot run to start the embedded app Apache Tomcat server on port 8080. Now open a browser and go to localhost 8080 api greetings in the address bar. The Spring Boot application routes the HTTP GET request to the web service endpoint that we mapped to slash API slash greetings. The hard-coded collection of greetings is converted automatically by Spring into a JSON array and returned to the browser. Take a moment to consider how little code we had to write to create this RESTful web service. Spring Boot and the Spring Framework abstracts the boilerplate code that manages the HTTP requests so that we can focus on the logic for our application features. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Look for more videos in the Spring Boot series to learn how to create environment-specific configurations using Spring Profiles, how to create scheduled batch processes, and how to use Spring Data for data persistence.